thousand. Uh, for the moment, we're looking at cryptos across the board falling. The Bitcoin is going to zero. Oh, oh shit. Whoa, 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 stop it here. You are not the first investor or trader which faces the crashing market. So many people have been there and me included. So in this video, I will give you ideas and some guidelines of what you can do when the market is crashing, when things go ugly and when prices go south. Hello again, my name is Stan and I was trading in the market since 2004 and as you can understand I was going through some difficult situations, some volatile situations. So I had started trading when markets were relatively calm in 2004, 5, 6, but when I transitioned to the markets full time and I started to trade futures, I deposited the, the big amount of money on the futures account. Guess what year that, that was? It was 2008 the year of world's financial crisis. Uh, I was quick enough to identify the bear market and I was just selling everything that um, I could sell. For example, I was selling equity futures, I was selling grain futures, even, I don't know, even uh, green lumber or futures like that. And everything was pretty much moving down and down and down at the moment. So I've made the significant amount of money back then but uh, markets stopped falling in the beginning of 2009, so that was a new market for me and I struggled to understand what to do with this market. So um, other times, so the behavior of markets were different, so they were not falling as an avalanche like it was in 2008, so probably it was quick and aggressive and fast, so the behavior on the market was different. And um, well, with those crises, as I was moving through my career, I've developed a couple of strategies, a couple of tips, a couple of principles, which might help you to go through this crisis too. Let's go. And the first principle, so when the market is crashing, the American dollar is usually moving up. So that's the rule of thumb. No, uh, most of the time when we have a crash, when we have a correctional or bear market, so we have American dollar going up and all speculative assets moving down because investors are trying to get rid of everything and get back to safety to the American dollar. Why do they do that? Because they want to buy treasury bonds of uh, US debt market. So they want to buy treasury bonds and they exchange everything else for the American dollars to buy treasuries or they want to just protect their uh, their money, protect their cash to, to, to accumulate cash to buy it back lower uh, as they think. So when that happens, the best thing that you can do as a trader to avoid buying or selling assets with the US dollar. Uh, for example, if you take a look at your USD, so you see it as at the new bottom. So is it a good idea to buy, or buy it or to sell it? Not at all, because if you do so, you may face the immediate pullback or you may face another another bottom. So that's very, very difficult to actually catch something here. I mean, the predictability of the market, the overall trading edge is kind of very, very small here in this case. So the market can weep so at this at this price. So sometimes people are successful at doing that. So they kind of uh, follow the market. They sell when the market is moving down. But you have to be relatively early within the day when that happens. So what I do instead, I'm focusing on crosses. For example, if you trade currencies, you can focus on, let's say, GBP, JPY, because Japanese yen also will suffer from that, from this crisis because of the carry trade operations, because everybody wants to get rid of Japanese yen because it's a low yield currency. And uh, if you take a look at, I don't know, GBP, JPY, you see it's standing on the support. And that's why I am giving the alert of buying that in my trading view, for example. Uh, not necessarily it will rebound very sharply and aggressively from right here, but it might be the good idea actually to think about going long for this instrument. Or it might be Euro Yen, or it might be Euro versus GBP or something else. So in this case, you're kind of focusing on crosses. You are going away from the American dollar and that might be the good solution when you have the crisis. If you trade stocks, what are you supposed to do? So first of all, let's take a look at the volatility. If the volatility is under control, if it's not going above 40, 50, 60 like it was 
in March 2020. And then market is mildly bearish. So the best thing that you can do is actually to step aside and, and wait. So the VIX is below 40. The level of fear is not extreme, which means that means that this buyers can actually step in. Uh, step in, I don't know, at any moment in time. So you will be surprised they start stepping in and driving the market up. Okay, so what, what do you do next? In this case, you say, mm, okay, so probably market is rebounding and it's going up and up and up. And then you start uh, thinking of shorting it when it comes to the resistance. So you see the per whether the performance of the market is uh, strong or not. So you start watching some fundamentals, some key fundamentals. And in case you see that fundamental is kind of not very good and the market cannot go through the roof or through the resistance. So you, you think, OK, so probably that's already a good level that uh, provides me with a good short opportunity. So that's called a dead cat bounce. It's called dead cat bounce. Let me give you know the name of this pattern. You can read in some book or on the web or what this pattern is about. It's actually the fast and extremely aggressive rebound, rebounding price or very big retracement, very fast retracement. That's called the dead cat bounce. After that, market is sliding, sliding. So it can provide you with a short opportunity later. So don't. Uh, don't um, be too fast to join <laughs> the, the selling market. So wait for the big rebound, the good rebound, and only after that you can sell. Okay, what else you can do if the market is crashing? So let's take a look at VIX again. So if the market is actually crashing, going beyond 40, 50, 60, that's unlikely to see the rebound. Market is moving down and down and down all the way with, of course, with pullbacks, but these pullbacks are kind of not very deep. So uh, when we, you, you see the VIX in this territory in 50, 55, 60, 70, well, that's already a market crash like it was, by the way, in March 2020. What are you supposed to do in this case? You got to work with the volatility. So, for example, portfolio managers are reducing their portfolios, maybe 50%, 60%, so they're selling stocks and uh, they, they want to get rid of the volatility. So, uh, by the way, that's very logical, not only for stocks, but for everything else. If the volatility goes up, the best thing that you can do is to reduce your trading size to minimize risk. But if you still want to trade in this situation, so you want to get rid of the volatility, how you ex exactly do you do that? So you're not short, you're not going short, you're not going long, but you combine stocks to a long short portfolio. For example, let me show you an example. You select the strong which you believe is uh, the stock which you believe is strong. For example, Apple. That's that's a fundamentally strong company and it is technically strong company, so you place it at the first place in this equation, Apple. And for example, you believe that Microsoft is not so strong fundamentally, so you got to sell Microsoft. You buy Apple, you sell Microsoft. And as a result, you have so-called spread. OK, when you have the spread moving on, so you see that it has a different performance from the market or from the performance of a stock. So, for example, when we had a market crash, so the spread was also moving down, but not as severely, not as sharply as the stock itself. If you can, you make a different combination, for example, Apple versus ExxonMobil, then there was a bad, bad idea to buy ExxonMobil in 2020, 2019. It was in a long term bearish trend. And you see what was actually happening during the crash, during the pandemic crash. So this spread or this combination was actually moving up, even though you could uh, buy Apple and Apple was moving down. But the so so the result of your long position for Apple could have been negative, but the result of the short position for ExxonMobil, which was moving down even more substantially, so this this result would outperform the result of the loss from Apple. So in other words, so the result of this combination would become the profit. And you see, if you take a look at the spread closely enough, so you see that it doesn't have any big gaps, any significant gaps like stocks do. Uh, stocks sometimes generate significant gaps, but here you see quite modest gaps, so they're not moving much, so it's kind of smooth chart. So it's not generating any huge volatility here, even though uh, we had some, you know, 
some sell-offs and some 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 uh, short coverage rallies the dynamics of the spread is still relatively stable in comparison to the stock itself so that's the way which can allow you to actually go away from the volatility this is how you can calculate the spread or the, the long short portfolio so what you can do in this case so for example apple is a stock which costs 150 dollars approximately and the daily average to range for this stock is five dollars for microsoft it's nine dollars so you can easily calculate the proportion of each stock which you're gonna take for example for apple is going to be if you take i don't know if you take 500 shares for apple you should sell 200 and something shares for microsoft so because volatility of microsoft is greater so you have to take less shares for microsoft than for apple so let's make a summary of this video so first of all when the market is crashing <clears throat> so you are not supposed to pick the bottom to buy it or to sell it when it crashes because you can be easily whipsawed volatility can work in both ways so it's a double-edged sword so instead you want to wait until the dead cat bounce happens so the significant and sharp pullback and only after that when it, the price comes to resistance you can still check fundamentals check whether uh, the price can still go through the roof go through the resistance and if you see that it can't if it's not sustainable so you can build a short position while you will be thinking and the majority of traders will be thinking oh the market is strong it's not a good point for sell but it's the best point for selling also if you trade currencies uh, if you want to avoid such volatility you can go away from american dollar and you can trade currency pairs like gbp jpy euro gbp euro jpy australian dollar versus canadian dollar or something so these currency pairs will not contain such big moves so they will be smoother and you can also analyze them using some technical analysis or fundamental analysis but you will go away from the dollar and from the potential uh, volatility which goes with the dollar and if you trade stocks you can um, you can actually wait and sit on the sidelines if the volatility is lower than 40 the VIX is lower than 40 and you sit on the sidelines and you wait for the good moment maybe to buy some shares fundamentally good companies because volatility can start to diminish so to go back and the market can start to rebound but if you see that the volatility is going above 40 above 50 above the 60 when you're dealing with a real market crash you need to manage volatility somehow so the easiest way is to just avoid trading or to reduce the trading size substantially well probably avoiding trading is the best option in, for many traders so you just wait until the market actually crashes until it finds the bottom builds a base and only after that you might start building some positions or if you can um, if you want to work with this move because you see the move is substantial it's going on and uh, you can you you, you don't want to miss it out so you can build a long short portfolio so you find a good fundamentalist stock which you believe is which you believe is good the good company with good fundamentals with good technicals and you pair it with other stock from the same sector from the same industry with weaker characteristics or maybe from another sector i don't know so that's also the option and uh, you build a spread and in this case when the market crashes your spread can benefit from that or it can be robust to the market crash so both alternatives are good because you manage volatility in this case so these are trading characteristics as an investor as an investor so if you are investing your money and the market is crashing so the best thing that you can do is actually sit on the sidelines and not react on that and uh, that's why uh, there are strategies with cost averaging when people are not purchasing assets altogether at, at one moment in time but they kind of split their purchases they buy for example some stocks every month the new month begins so they buy some more the new month begins they buy some more regardless of the price that's a well-known strategy called cost averaging uh, for the bearish market it works just perfectly because you buy more and more and more at a lower price those investors who invested in our arc invest from katie woods for example they suffered the most because th this fund plummeted 60 percent from the top probably and even more so they suffered substantially 
So uh, with that, of course, when you build a portfolio, so you, you should uh, follow certain guidelines, you should diversify, you should build a uh, not so risky portfolio. You, do, you, you, you don't want to concentrate your risk in the risky names and the risky stocks and technological stocks. But that's a totally different story. That's not a topic of our video. Thank you for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the like button and see you later in next videos. Put the comment down below what topics are interesting for you, by the way. See you later.